Guys, Eugene here from Autobus.my. Morning. Oh, sorry, sorry, Kalis. Hey guys, day one of the Evo Enduro Drive. This year is going to be from KL to Huahin. 2,400 kilometers in total over the next five days. That is going to be our trusty steed for the next few days. It's the locally assembled, newly launched Mercedes Benz C43 AMG. It's going to be absolutely epic. KL to Hua Hin. We've been told that from Hat Yai to Hua Hin, there will be another 700 over kilometers, which will approximately take us about 10 hours according to Waze. Some, some, not all, have already made the journey all the way to Hua Hin in one day. 1,200 over kilometers in one day. Can you imagine that? It's going to be another long and tiring day ahead. So we're refueling the C43 before another 700 km drive all the way to Hua Hin. And for those of y'all who are curious as to how much petrol costs in Thailand, more than 3 ringgit a litre for the RON95. We started off the day in Hat Yai today with about 750 kilometers. Uh, last I checked, there's about 150 to go. The sky is getting dark, as you can see. We are absolutely like knackered, tired. It's just, I can't even think of what to say anymore. So it's day 3 of the EVO Enduro, we just had our brunch at the Loligo Hotel. Pretty sweet spot I must say, you guys gotta google this. And uh, that's our steed that has accompanied us for the last 1,200 kilometers. The locally assembled, brand new Mercedes-Benz C43 AMG. As you can tell from these pictures, it has gone through quite a bit. It's got like grime and dirt all over it, after all those kilometers. So, we're gonna get the car wash. There is supposed to be a group photo shoot at this pretty scenic spot later. Those are the other cars. Bobby's car is right there. Volvo. Shout out to Volvo. Thank you for being so generous with the XC60. So 
also there are absolutely terrible days at work where you feel like pulling out your hair but there are also days like this where everywhere you look are cars, cars, interesting cars and more interesting cars and these are all the cars that have been part of the 1290 kilometer drive from KL all the way to Pahin. We're currently at this place called the Raja Bhakti Monument or something like that and as you can see it's pretty cool in the background. So we're here assembled. I think there's about 30 over, 40 over cars. We're here assembled to take a good picture. Hopefully it'll look really epic. Here are some of the selection. We've got some C-Classes, we've got some Jettas, a Volvo S90, a BMW 335i, a Passat, XC60, a 530, a Mondeo, Bobby 6 Series. This lot, well, this lot may be a little more interesting with that bit more flair. Over there, you got the Corrado, the Elise S1, Next to it, a GD86, Elise, Bangs Mazda, she dropped the top all the way, kind of sounded wrong, but it's okay, she'll understand. So, it's not just about sports cars and high performance cars, look at that, a Jeep Wrangler, an FJ Cruiser, all the C43s, a 996 Turbo. Beautiful Lexus, gosh, the sight of it rolling on the road. I'm glad to be able to finally show you all the cars that have participated in the Evo Enduro Drive from KL to Hua Hin since we have all gathered for this group photo shoot. Look at the diversity. This is what the Evo Enduro is all about, celebrating diversity, camaraderie, and most importantly, the joy of driving. Okay, so I figured after so many hundreds of kilometers from KL to Hat Yai to Hua Hin and then now from Hua Hin back to Hat Yai, I figured I should like at least let you in on how it feels like to drive on the north-south highway of uh, southern Thailand. First of all, you notice from the map that once you've passed the border and once you've passed the, say, Hat Yai, there is only one route and it's towards the east side on the tail end of uh, the south of uh, Thailand so that's one that's basically the north-south highway there are two lanes there aren't any barriers left and right so that's one thing to take note you should really be careful and then in terms of driver behavior um, I kind of notice that these guys tend to keep on the right lane and the weird thing is, if they want to let you pass, they won't move to the left lane, which is the slow lane. They will actually signal to the right lane and be on the side of the fast lane for you to cut through. It's, it's a bit weird. Um, so, I'm going to admit that all the overtakings have been taken on the left lane as if we were in Europe. Uh, also, these guys are really erratic. Thai drivers are quite erratic. Uh, no signal and regardless if you are signaling them that you are coming in rather quickly they pretty much would not give a care in the world and they would just turn out it's really up to you to it's really up to you and your car to break and slow down as much as uh, you can as much as possible also if you're driving on this road, say you're heading from Hat Yai to Hua Hin, 
which is going to be about a 700 km drive or vice versa heading back down uh, don't worry if you are lost if you think you're lost uh, there's always a u-turn every 10 to 20 kilometers there's always a u-turn on your right side you know how on the north south highway we are always uh, looking out for the next exit we pay the toll and then we exit the highway and then we come back out and rejoin the highway or make a u-turn you exit on the left but on this particular highway you exit on the right but it is also very safe which is all all credit where it's due to the Thai authorities there are plenty of runoff space for you to slow down keep to the right and eventually make a u-turn but cars here tend to travel quite fast I suppose between 100 to 120 I notice it's that kind of average so just be careful when you're turning out to the highway just keep a lookout for traffic as as how you would normally on the north south highway but uh, these guys bear in mind most of the trucks most of the cars that you see on this road are mostly pickup trucks and heavy cargo like trailers so you don't want to be nudged by them there wouldn't be much runoff space for your own safety so that's about it.